Hey pilots, Drain Man here. Today I have a very special video. Today you're going to learn how to flash your flight controller. Doesn't matter what brand you have, doesn't matter what type you have, whether it's a 20x20 20 20 or 30x30. 30 30. Doesn't matter. You're going to learn how to flash it today. So you just got a new flight controller in the mail. You put it on your build. You plug it into Beta Flight. You realize this firmware is older than I am. Okay, your quad is acting up. You're flying. You don't know what's going on. It's acting weird. We don't know what the problem is. Let's flash new firmware onto it. Get it back up and running properly. Maybe your flight controller is working perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. But you just found out that Betaflight released a new version. And you want to get it on your flight controller so you can check it out, try it out. And hey, if they updated the firmware, that means that it's better than it's ever been. And we want it on there. I like new firmware. Do you like new firmware? You guys are not going to want to miss out on this. Alright, so you can see here I've got a couple flight controllers from all different walks of life. It doesn't matter. We've got old ones. We've got ugly ones. We've got small ones. We've got weird cool looking ones. We've got yellow ones. We've got those ones. We've got the brand new latest technology ones. We've got all different walks of life here for flight controllers. I just want to run over with you guys real quick how to find, where to find, where's, where are we going to get our boot button because you need your boot button in order to do this. Alright, so on this one right here you'll see if I flip it over, right here I have a boot button. Do you see it? So you're going to use this boot button and in order to do that you're going to hold the button and then you're going to plug in your USB to the computer. Another example is going to be this DYS board. In order to do it, you'll need this boot button, which we found right here. Do you see that? There's your boot button. You're going to hold that down while you plug in your USB to the computer. Another example is this one here. What you'll do is there's a button right here. You'll push this button in while plugging in your USB to the computer. This crazy looking one here has a different style boot button, but you can see it. You can probably even hear it. That one's right there. What you'll do is you'll hold that down and then plug the USB into the computer. As you can see, if you guys haven't learned already, you can find it. There's your boot button right there. So you'll hold this down while plugging this into the computer. Your next one up, we got a little tiny guy here. So with this one, you have a couple different options. And this might be like some other flight controllers. You might have one like this and you're saying, hey, Drain Man, I've checked my entire flight controller and I cannot find a boot button. Well, what you can find is you'll find where it'll actually say the words boot. Right here where it says boot. That lets you know that these two right here are the boot pads. So you have two options here. Option one is you take a bead of solder and you solder it across. You bridge it. So what you're doing is you're making continuity from here to here by filling it with solder. Option two is you take a pair of all metal tweezers just like this and you touch both pads like this. And now you're shorting those pads out because the power is running through these tweezers bridging the both things and that's exactly how a button works just like on on this one that has a button you've got two pads there and when you press down this button you're creating continuity between the two of them so without a button you just do it manually you can use a bead of solder you can even solder a little piece of wire or use something like this you can lay it across just like this it doesn't really matter you just need to bridge these two pads and the last but not least uh, example that I'm going to give you is this brand new fancy schmancy flight controller right here. And you can see that in 2019, brand new production, latest firmware, latest features, latest everything, you've already found it. It says boot right there and there's your button. You're going to hold that button in while you plug in your USB. So you can see here we've taken all different types, shapes, sizes, colors, all different uh, ages of flight controllers and I showed you how you can find the boot button which is what you're going to need to get your flight controller into bootloader mode. The bootloader is where you get back into the back beginning of the operating system. It's just like BIOS for your computer. And if you don't have a boot button, I showed you on the example like this little guy here how you can bridge the pad a little bit. The only other scenario would be if your boot button isn't working. And if your boot button isn't working, I'm going to show you how to get around that too. Okay, pilots, so go ahead and get open Betaflight and 
first thing to take note of is my configurator. The configurator that I have is 10.5.1. If you have a different version, that is okay, but it might look a little bit different. You'll see a big glaring update firmware up here, and it's just it's just not that easy so ignore that if you have this configurator and you have that there that's great uh, it doesn't matter so the very first thing you need to take note of is your port which is up here at the top and this is this is the port or com that your flight controller is on in order to flash firmware you have to be in DFU mode which is also the bootloader so we'll talk about that a little bit more later so if I plug in my flight controller you'll see we'll enter a com I had auto auto connect on so you'll see I'm on com 3 com 3 means that I am on a good serial and I can log in and connect to the flight controller and do whatever it is that I need to do but I am not in bootloader so if you are on this page here and you are not in bootloader that's going to be the very first step and that's what I showed you guys on how to hold the boot button and enter DFU mode but before we go that far the very first thing is you have to know your target okay so what is the target the target is the firmware that's for your board so every manufacturer has a different target and every manufacturers target or firmware is just how they like it for their board they believe that that's the best way their board is gonna run under that firmware uh, Betaflight is in the works of making a unified firmware or a unified target and what that'll do is that will allow multiple interfaces to all work under one target so if you had an F4 everybody can fall under that or if your board was an F7 everybody could work under that or at least if you had a similar you know MCU then you would be able to do it but in any which way that's not where we're at yet so right now you gotta figure out your target you're not gonna be able to flash without your target and if you do flash without knowing your target and you put on the wrong target everything is gonna act funky and weird and you're not gonna know why and then you're gonna have tons of problems and beta flight and flying drones is just going to be an, an unpleasant experience let's go ahead and find your target one of the ways if you have the newer configurator like I do you can hit connect and you'll see up in the top left right here it'll say target so you can see I have the Kakute F4 V2 board now if your beta flight configurator does not show that or let's just say your board is defaulting and it's not showing you that you can find your target by going online and searching for it which can be difficult if you don't know what you're looking for but another way that you can do it is you can come here to the CLI go to the command line and you're gonna enter version and this right here is going to let you know your target so you can see my target right here you can also see that I'm running a very outdated version of beta flight this was back in 2018 so this is well over a year old but we did this to find our target so now that I have my target I can move forward in flashing my board if you're having a hard time getting here for any reason and that's why you're flashing your board because you might not have this convenience of just plugging in and going to the CLI because and, and you know and that's all the reason why you are flashing is because you're having those issues so now that you have your target the next thing that you need to do is you need to get your flight controller into bootloader mode now if I disconnect here I can go ahead and enter the firmware flasher through here. Dang, auto connect. I can enter the firmware flasher through here, or I can do it through here. Once I'm here, the next thing I need to do is I need to get out of a comm and I need to get into bootloader. So I will hold down this button while plugging in my USB. You can see that I have not entered bootloader. Oricom. Your flight controller is not allowing you to get into DFU mode. Your next option, if you have access to your CLI, is you come in here to your CLI and then you'll come down to the command line and you'll hit BL and press enter. Now you can see that I'm also having trouble this way. I'm not able to get in. So the first thing I've tried is holding the boot button and plugging in at the same time. That should take me into DFU mode. As you can see, 
that did not work. Plan B, you know, the next level and what we would try would be to go to the CLI, just like I showed you, and enter BL. If that is not working, now you're running short on options. So the very next thing you will do, I already have this, but you may not, so I'm gonna walk you through it real quick. You're gonna go to this link, I'll have it down in the video description, and you're gonna click on Impulse RC Driver Fixer, and then it's going to download. Here it is, all right? This is what it should look like. You now have it, okay? So you are gonna open this up, and it is now searching for the flight controller. So what you'll do, is go ahead and plug in your flight controller and it's gonna find it and it's gonna put it into bootloader mode for you it should install the DFU driver because the reason you couldn't enter DFU mode is because you didn't have the correct driver the driver has now been fixed I should be able to get into bootloader mode alright so after it fixed my driver, I unplugged my flight controller, I then held down my boot button and I plugged it in, and as you can see, I entered DFU mode with no problem at all. So now you should be right here where I'm at now in DFU mode. So now that you're here, you're going to go to update firmware. The very first thing you need to do is pick your target. So, it's up to you whether you want to show the unstable releases or not. Now, what that means is, is that Betaflight and the other firmware providers and creators are constantly making new firmware and making changes and fixing bugs and all kinds of stuff like that. So, it is up to you whether you want to use a stable or an unstable version. I go unstable because I know that the newest, hottest stuff is always awesome, even if it does have a couple new bugs, and usually it's better than the one before it anyways. But that is up to you. Do not take my advice on that. So I'm going to come here to the target selection and I'm going to go to my target. So for this board we found that it was a Kakute and as you can see here there's F4, F4V2, F7, da, 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 da. so there's tons of options here so it's easy to screw this up. But we wrote down our target for this board and we found that it was an F4V2. I'm now going to click that. I am going to come here and I am going to select the version that I want so if I want it to stay stable I can click this and then go to the most stable version which is 4.0.4 or I can show the unstables and this is still the most stable version so that's also something you can do to check if you'd like is do it like that so I'm gonna go ahead and click this so now you do need to erase your entire board so if there are settings or peripherals or anything on this board you're unsure of, I would go ahead and get that now. If you're unsure of the protocol that your ESCs are going to use, if you're unsure of your, your gyro time, your, your loop speed, anything like that. Anything you don't know, go write it down or you can go to the CLI and get it out of there, copy and paste it and then put it back on after. But in order to do this flash, I recommend and Betaflight recommends that you do a full chip erase. That'll be this right here. Make sure it's indicated. Do not touch the baud rate. And then you're going to load the firmware online. You will need Wi-Fi in order to do that. So make sure you have loaded the firmware online. If not, you can preload it, store it to your computer, and then click load firmware from local. But just make sure you have Wi-Fi. All right, so here you go. Now, the loaded firmware is online it's ready to go and all we got to do is pull the trigger and now you can see that it's flashing and then it's going to uh, well first it's erasing then it's going to flash and do all the stuff it's going to do it did successfully flash and another good way to know that is it exited DFU or bootloader mode all by itself and it put me back into a serial port so now I can go ahead and press connect and you'll see right here I'm running the latest firmware of Betaflight. I'm no longer running that old 3 point whatever I had. It was extremely old. So let's go ahead and get into the CLI. And then we can check our version again. And look at that. That is the date that this firmware was released. And that is the firmware that we have on it. So our board is flashed with the newest firmware. It's locked and loaded, ready to go. I hope that this was helpful for you guys that it taught you guys everything you need to know in order to flash your board I know that there are videos out there on how to flash firmware it doesn't show you when you hit a couple roadblocks what you got to do to get that working so I hope that I was able to fix that for you and like always you can go ahead and use the comments as a thread to help other guys out or if you have questions drop them down there if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and do that and I'll see you guys on the next one